Knuckles Chaotix began as the prototype Sonic Crackers, with a name similar to Clackers, a toy popular in the era before video games. This demo showed these clacker physics in action, with the first version of the music for Chaotix's hub world, which is centered around the main motif that could be described as a Mixolydian hello. Chaotix's hub world features different variations on this theme, depending on the four different times of day, such as the daytime track, Hyper Hyper, Evening Star plays in the evening, with the Hello converted to Aeolian Minor. The game's core mechanic is moving a duo connected by a tether, and the soundtrack sets up this premise by swapping out 4-4 for 2-4 time. 4-4 time is what you're used to, with a hierarchy of beat 1 as the strong beat, beat 3 is less strong, and 2 and 4 are the weak beats that usually get the snares. This example even has a rest on beat 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. But 2 4 has a briefer cycle, starting up a new measure with full emphasis every 2 beats. Kirby knows what's up. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Nice Meeting You is the track that plays at the combi catcher to select your sidekick, bringing in 2-4 time right off the bat. Then again soon after in the level roulette music, Chaotic World. This beat also bookends the zone exits, and Knuckles is not bored. Interdimensional travel is what he just considers a Tuesday. The zones themselves don't use the 2-4 time signature, but it keeps returning in situations confined to a limited space, like the merry-go-round boss, the type of beat for the Fonz to dance to. The mini-boss theme is a real toe-tapper, taking its mini status seriously with the downsizing of one measure to start up the next phrase early. Each of these context-specific scenarios reinforce the confinement of 2-4 time, but in the actual zones, the melodies and rhythms take on greater independence, with wide possibilities of tether maneuvers in the game's physics engine. The rubber band system has the two characters moving at variable speeds, expressed musically via rhythm disparity, when an instrument hits notes at a different rate than the beat, so they occur out of sync by design. We saw a great example of this at Angel Island 2, because the drum beat was good old 4-4. but the keyboard's note cycle occurs every three increments. Angel Island keeps up this disparate cycle for five iterations, but Britney Spears has a beat, keeping up the three note jig for seven cycles before recalibrating on beat one. I can take it, take it, take no more. Never felt my felt like this before. In Chaotix, you get it right after the intro cutscene with this rhythm disparity in the intro level's theme, Door into Summer. These instruments produce notes at different rates, which will naturally overlap at certain intervals. The tether fling sees the two characters cruising at different speeds, and it's the moment of overlap when you want to grab your pal. That way you're ready with a fling toss the next time it's needed. Now compare this to the very first moments of the game, where you play as Knuckles untethered, set to the song Take a Nap, part of the rich tradition of Knuckles napping when a Sonic game begins, and the backing chords provide this solo echidna some low-tempo reggae, with the comfort food of syncopated chords between every single beat. Where do you think Knuckles got his color scheme and dreads? But 
once you tether up, zones like Techno Tower put the rhythm disparity mechanic to the test. Chaotix doesn't push it to seven cycles like Britney. In fact, these examples are exactly five cycles each. Five main characters, five zones. This adds up. Though there is one instance where it attempts to go for a sixth, and you bet it's definitely in the six-sided special stage. It doesn't finish the fifth and sixth cycle, getting cut off to recalibrate on beat one. But then, what would happen if the pattern continued through into the next measure, and beyond? An example of how this can play out is Techno Tower's boss. Robotnik's rhythmic chaos is displeasing to radio-friendly tastemakers. See how it doesn't even reset when the next measure starts? The sky's the limit. You could even maintain the pattern while crossing bar lines that change chords. Not every zone's track features this technique, though, such as the Marina Madness theme, Seascape. The zone begins with a melodic slingshot on this first note, which, if we examine a bit closer, this is not just the note D, but quickly moving through C and C sharp to get there. So instead of just, duh, it's a quick, duh, 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 a great way to generate momentum instantly at the start. Seascape has an antecedent consequent phrase structure, and we've seen other tracks with phrase lengths of two measures or four. Marina Madness doubles this to an eight measure length. The phrase is played back to back twice in full, with the only tweaks coming at the very end. All within Marina Madness, one of the more horizontally structured levels in the game. And if you notice the bittersweet feel of Seascape's chord progressions, this composition is an excellent case study to get a hold of relative keys. By now you know that anytime you consider the notes of the minor scale, the major scale is available within these exact notes by just starting on note three and walking up that same set of notes in order. This concept applies to chords in the exact same way. So deciding whether a song is in a major or minor key is sometimes a matter of perspective by deciding which chords are emphasized at important moments. Marina Madness has a distinctive mix of comfort and melancholy, and identifying the tonic home bass one chord is somewhat ambiguous. It's simple enough to identify the names of each chord, but let's first listen on the hypothesis that this song's key is G minor, with the tonic chord here. But just like with the scale demonstration earlier, the three chord may in fact be the one chord of a major keyed enterprise. So let's listen again, and to be clear, this is the exact same recording in the chords. We're just changing the way we think of the function each chord serves. Is this actually the major one chord of home base stability? Comment below on which chord you hear as the tonic home bass, and then come check out the chord voicing arrangements in section B. Looking at these first four chords, you can see a cool Sudoku puzzle game that composers like to play, creating a chord progression where there's a note shared in common among all of them. You can achieve amazing results when featuring a single note that perseveres while lots of other notes shuffle around it. The note shared in common between all of these chords is F, so see how the arrangement keeps hitting F during every single chord while the lower note moves to conform to each chord change? A note shared between chords is a common tone, and it's as if the static common tone is the player while SVO bounces back and forth. The back half has great common tones, with Knuckles and Espio never moving on the same measure, which unfortunately describes a lot of people's first experience with these mechanics. But 
but if you thought this soundtrack's rhythm disparity was ambitious enough, get ready for Amazing Arena, featuring the Sonic series' first foray into a 5-4 time signature, set to the disarray of a zone where Robotnik has drained out all the color in life. Did you see how the last run through added a surprise sixth beat at the end? This level's really not making it easy for you. Rhythm disparity is chaotic enough on a 4 4 beat, but shoving it into a 5 4 framework? Oh, hell yes! This zone includes Sonic CD DNA, with a target you have to hunt down before leaving the level. And as with an amazing spouse, finding the rainbow button restores the color to your world. This amazing imagery crams in every inch of the color wheel, and the composition itself mashes up multiple Easter eggs of previous Sonic games soundtracks. Cause Knuckles Chaotix came out in 1995, while the Sega Saturn was coming out. So the devs literally knew about games like Sonic 3, Chaotix's freefall bonus stages even showed up in Sonic CD's ending animation. Right off the bat, the lead melody draws from the Endless Mind Space Time wormhole. It kind of sounds like a Mania title theme that's lost its innocence. For that matter, Mania seems to have drawn from this well, because the rhythm of the Jet Set Bebop boss theme resembles the first thing you hear when the lights turn on. Studiopolis was the first boss to use that theme. And between these camera badniks and this massive lens, Amazing Arena is the Studiopolis precursor, complete with film reels, a projector, and screen. Ha! <laughs> you think that's cool? Remember that bass flourish and flying battery in the turnaround at the song's loop? A year after Sonic and Knuckles, it returns in Amazing Arena for a callback flyover. Makes you wonder if the entire facility is going to airlift up to the sky. Cause the chord voicings climb to new heights too. The tonic chord starts with the bass triad, which Amazing Arena climbs up by stacking on the 7th, skipping Ogata's good old 9th to tack on the 11th which is just the four note bumped up an octave, so it's dissonant in its spot directly adjacent to the five in the scale. Watch how it keeps pulsing that 11th, in dissonant defiance of the tonic. Tim Fallon's time tracks did the same thing, pulsing the 11th like a satellite broadcast from an astro lounge in outer space. This 11 pulse gets more attention in the drum solo breakdown, which is even more pleasing when you layer in the whirring UFO elevators. And the composer may have been a drummer by trade, because this breakdown seems to hit every last drum in the kit. If you focus on listening to the supporting instruments, it feels like just a random spattering of chaotic notes. Bring in the bass and this is crammed with action. It's everything, everywhere, all in five acts. With all this jam-packed chaos, no wonder it's taken 30 years to unpack this game's deal. If you like the soundtrack but want to get more out of the game, you probably just need the fling toss. Pick up your sidekick, jump and throw forward, then immediately let go of all controller inputs, otherwise Espio won't pull you forward. Once he does, take back control and enjoy the speed. After you get the hang of it, it's the bomb. Although the bomb is not. Sometimes in life you pick the bomb. Life doesn't have a reset button though. Adapt rise up. You'll be back with Mighty by Act 2. Probably. 
Speeding through this game has been an amazing mountain to climb. And here are my times so far. Lots of these were on live streams, and you could be there at a future one, or even step up and dethrone my best time. Are you up to it? Watch out for the bonus stage rings. You'll burn time through a bit of Charmy B's booty shaking routine. And Charmy spotted something familiar in Sonic Superstar's Speed Jungle Act Sonic, with the rainbow button rhythm appearing in yet another auto-scrolling boss. <laughs> 